By 2007, when the conflict in northern Uganda subsided, over 25,000 children had been abducted and conscripted into the rebel ranks of the Joseph Korn Lord's Resistance Army. Over the span of the conflict, a significant number had either managed to escape or been rescued whenever Ugandan government forces engaged the rebels. Under its Uganda Children of War Rehabilitation Program, World Vision Uganda set up a reception center in Gulu to receive and counsel the children before being reunited with their families and reintegrated into communities. Since 1995, over 14,000 children have gone through this center, rehabilitated and resettled in their communities of origin. Twenty-nine-year-old Christopher Rubanga Kene operates a border border business in Gulu Town. An ex-child soldier, Rubanga Kene was abducted in 1988 at the age of 14. He spent 12 years in captivity before he grabbed an opportunity to escape in 2002. He spent three months at the center. <laughs> Armed with the training from the center, Rubanga Kenye, together with his colleagues, formed Kicha Bear, a 45-member self-help group through which he accessed a loan to buy his motorcycle. He's able to make approximately 180,000 shillings per week, of which he remits 65,000 shillings towards servicing the loan. The balance he spends uh -huh. on supporting his family of six, including his five children. He needs to pay school fees, pay the loan, and buy the food. Then just buy the soap, any clothes or anything. Rubanga Kenya's wife, Apio Jennifer, operates a small tailoring business from their home, located in Limward, Gulu municipality. Just like her husband, Apio is a former abductee. Their romance, which resulted into marriage, started in the bush. She managed to escape from the LRA one year after her husband and went through the center, during which she received skills training in tailoring. World Vision gave her a sewing machine, together with fabric, as startup capital to help her earn a living. Currently, the family is engaged in farming and the money from the tailoring business goes to paying laborers on the family gardens in the village. Uh, we have the same same, we have a beans in the, that's in the garden, so we already plant for that's going to grant us. Thirty-one-year-old Florence Amito operates a modest tailoring business from her home in Peche Ring Road, Gulu Municipality. An ex-LRA abductee, Amito was abducted from her home in Kitgum in 1996. After eight years with the rebels, she escaped and went through the World Vision Rehabilitation Center from where she spent nine months acquiring life skills training in tailoring. Florence is one of the thousands of youths in northern Uganda who have benefited from the World Vision Economic Empowerment of the Youth program. World Vision go watch any account teller and piano no don't give no more my drama kwanne, but my drama kwanya per. World Vision supported her with a sewing machine and the initial fabric, which Florence wittingly utilized to kickstart her business, and saw it profitably grow. Today, this single mother of four mainly makes dresses, handbags, table mats, tablecloths, and toys, which she sells to get money to support herself, her four children, and her younger brother. Later in 2010, World Vision supported Florence undergo a one-month course training specializing in designing. This significantly added value to her skills. 
Subsequently, Watoto Center in Gulu identified her as one of their trainers. She is regularly invited to go and train participants. She was also able to make more sophisticated designs that attracted higher quality taste clientele, translating into more revenue. Today, Florence attributes her achievements and livelihood over the last seven years to the support and intervention World Vision accorded to her. As communities in northern Uganda struggle to rebuild after years of conflict that ravaged their villages, access to clean water is a top priority. Through the Water, Sanitation and Hygiene WASH project, World Vision is supporting communities to drill low-cost boreholes with the goal of increasing access to clean water and overall community health. The low-cost self-supply is being piloted in two sub-counties of Bobi and Koro, Gulu district, targeting a total of 30 pumps. We are looking at rural populations, rural households, rural communities. So rural households, somebody can come in, make an application, whether it is um, self, uh, private, shared, or private, non-shared, or community. We have these three categories. Okay, we need one water Already, communities and individuals have benefited from this initiative. Retired civil servant Charles Watmon lives in Cow Village, Pagea Parish, Koro Sub County. He applied for and had this water pump installed in his compound. I was very lucky to be the first beneficiary of this whole this borehole in the in Koro and Bobby sub county. As a farmer, Charles desperately needed water not only for his farming activities, but most importantly for home use. But the most important one is the the okay. biogas plant where we use the cow dung for, for lighting the house and for cooking. So we need at least over um, 150 liters of water every morning. But not only that, um, we have also um, some animals. So all this needs uh, water. But Charles did not want to restrict the water source to himself and his family. He allowed the local community share and have a stake in the facility. The community is very happy. They pay 100 shillings per 20 liters jerry can. And they do this one willingly because they know the money will be used for maintenance. At 66, Angeo Santa is one of the vulnerable mothers who have been greatly relieved by the installation of the water source here. She lives within Cal Village, approximately 60 meters away from Charles's pump. A widow living with seven children and grandchildren, Angeo's home is one of the 30 households that have benefited from Watmon's pump. With a complication in her right leg, she was finding it increasingly difficult to fetch the three jerry cans of water she needs for her home daily from the protected spring a kilometer away. Ento madam come beti pi tiga war mon cells ana to ar kwanya tan leta keta come beti ana tiarne tiara jolu pi a kedo a tere be kedo. The pilot project has also drilled public pumps to provide water for the general communities like this one in a Billy village, which serves 40 households. It is mid-morning, and Lozio Nakabale, together with his children, are working on the family farm. Prolonged drought has taken its toll on the crops and he's digging a manure water retaining trench in preparation for the much anticipated rains, one of the best farming practices he got exposed to through World Vision Uganda. Lozio lives in Lukonge village, Kayawe, Nkozi sub-county in Piji district. This piece of land is part of the larger land on which he farms. A fisherman turned farmer, 
In 1999, after fishing for 20 years, Lozio was forced to abandon fishing, opting for farming. Lozio dedicated all his time and energy into farming to support his large family of 13 children. And three years later, World Vision Uganda, under its Food Security and Livelihood Program, identified him for support. <laughs> The support from World Vision opened him to a new world of good farming practices for better yields. Unlike his fellow village mates, Lozio grabbed the opportunity and utilized it maximally. Today, he boasts of a substantial orchard comprising 20 mango trees, 20 orange trees, and half an acre of pineapples. Besides, Lozio has 600 coffee trees from which he harvests 20 bags in a single season. Yields from the one-acre banana plantation, intercropped with beans and other vegetables, provided by World Vision Uganda, go to feeding the family. Besides crops, in 2009, Lozio received one pig from World Vision Uganda to kickstart his piggery project. His hard work prompted district officials to identify him for NAD's project. Lozio strongly attributes his current achievements and successes to World Vision's unprecedented intervention. So, Mr. Zomana Katia Tusek Makere University, Katio Mulala Mudirida, Aluxinia Mukaga, Awo in Tamali. Katia Twenty-seven-year-old Prosi Nang Kabira undergoes an ultrasound scan examination. The examination indicates that she is three weeks pregnant. She is also able to know when she conceived and when she's expected to deliver. This information will help her better plan for the baby. Unlike many women in Uganda, Prosi and her fellow women in Kozi Sub County are privileged to access such facilities in such a rural setting. 
Located in Kayawe, Nindye Health Center 3 is a health facility that was initiated by the local community following public dire need for an accessible health center in the area. They rented the house, which was a private house, and uh, there partly the government helped them and sent first two health workers but we're operating in a very small place. The community put it to our development partners. That is World Vision. So they were told that they would have to gather materials, to collect materials, to contribute to this common good. The support from World Vision Uganda, coupled with extraordinary enthusiasm from the local community, led to the successful accomplishment of the initiative. Following construction of better structures in 2008, the facility was elevated from Health Center 2 status to Health Center 3, capable of providing a whole range of services. We do general outpatient care. We treat the common conditions that we see among our community members. We treat, we have a young child clinic, we do vaccinations, we have um, HIV counseling, testing and treatment services. We do deliveries, antenatal, postnatal, we do diagnostic ultrasound scan, we as well do uh, elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV activities. The center handles, on average, between 35 to 40 patients daily. The establishment of Nindia Health Center 3 is one classic example where the World Vision Uganda Citizens Voice Action Approach is helping community members demand for their entitlements from government. We had a challenge. At a glance, it looks like pupils attending a lesson delivered by a police officer, but it's not. This is a meeting of some of the executive members representing 54 child protection committees in Kozi Sub County. We meet on a monthly basis to see how we have performed. Chairman. When Assistant Inspector of Police Arthur Semanda was posted as OC Kayawe in 2010, Good. he didn't know the daunting task that lay ahead of his assignment. I was alarmed by the number of crimes that were being committed against children. We would receive from 80 to 100 on a monthly basis. Child desertions, defilement, failing to provide the necessaries of life, corporal punishments were the orders of the day. So, it happened that our division was also touched by the same crime rate. We were called upon as a community to see how we could eradicate violations of ch children in this, in this sub-county. And we made a team. We started with the selection of child committees. These are nine boys and girls at the local level one. Parish level, that's local level two. Then we elected children protection committees. These are for the elderly people in the villages. They are also at all the local level throughout the 54 villages and at parish levels. We went to all the 31, 31 schools, primary schools within Nkosi Sub County, and we selected four co teachers. These are our contact people. In the case of any violation of a child's right, they're the first people to be contacted. Children from various child protection committees in the entire sub-county regularly carry out child rights awareness campaigns, during which members are sensitized about their rights and cautioned to look out for crimes against children in their respective communities. When a case is committed at local level one, the perpetrators are called by this committee to answer queries about the violation of rights. If you don't send your kid at school, they call you to give you reasons to why you don't send your kid at school. 
batteries and assaults in the villages, they handle that. If it's somehow severe, they send it to police. Three years after the launch of the initiative, its impact cannot be emphasized enough. I used to get between 80 to 100, but today, throughout the 54 villages of Unkozi, you, we can't exceed the 10 cases reported against children. We thank World Viso greatly for the contribution of that. They have committed funds, we have educated people, people are empowered. Even if they face doubt tomorrow, I'm sure sustainability will be there.